Hey there, and what's up all you Team 116ers, and anyone else who might be watching this. Well, we've arrived at Easter week, the week and weekend that we have designated to enjoy marshmallowy peeps, to do to eggs what you used to do to the walls of your house when you were two, and celebrate the immortal Cadbury Bunny. Okay, so maybe that's not quite accurate, but doesn't it sometimes feel like that? Well, here's the thing, team. With all the extra restrictions and fear and chaos happening in the world this year, this might be your prime opportunity to share with someone the good news we celebrate this week. How we celebrate in the hope that Jesus' sacrifice for us and his resurrection brings. More than any time than I can remember, people are searching for any semblance of hope to hold on to during this crisis that's happening. You just might be the one in position to help them know where to find it. Given how many churches are online right now, there are going to be so many videos that you'll be able to find and direct people to that read through the Easter story and talk about the hope that his sacrifice and resurrection brings. I would encourage you to find a video from someone who tells and explains it in a way that you understand best and send that out to people. That's one way that you can share hope with others in this season. But rather than add another video of the same thing out there, I was praying and thinking about how to talk about the purpose and meaning of this week in a different way. And so while I was reading through the scriptures of Jesus' sacrifice and his resurrection, four verses jumped out at me. Now, I remember reading these verses before, but they're ones I've read through and not thought a whole lot about before. I'm guessing that at least some of you have probably never even heard this part of the story because these four verses don't get a lot of attention. But what these four verses reveal is incredible when you look at what happens. These four verses are Matthew 27, 51 through 54. And it says, At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. So why did these verses jump out at me? These verses capture both the meaning and the truth behind Jesus' purpose on earth. And they also add so much emphasis to the hope that we gain from his sacrifice and resurrection when you look at them. I mean, verses 51 through 53, they capture a part of the story that is little if ever talked about, but shows just more into the power Jesus has over death and the hope that we have to look forward to. A lot of times when we read about this earthquake that happens after Jesus gives up his final breath, we picture something like some boulders on the ground splitting apart, kind of like you see when ice freezes in them and they, the ice splits them open. But those weren't the important rocks that were be being split. The important rocks split by the earthquake were the stones locking these dead saints in their tombs. So when you read these verses again, don't just think anymore of some boulders on the ground cracking apart. Capture this picture of the power of Jesus, shaking apart the foundational rules of this world, breaking through death's door to resurrect those faithful to him. Powerful picture. And then verses 53 and 54, they capture another very important truth of Jesus, that he truly is the Son of God. Now there are those who faithfully knew Jesus as the Son of God prior to his sacrifice and resurrection, but there are also many who followed him around just because he did great miracles, the crowds, and there are many who didn't believe him at all. But what I find telling from these verses is mainly the centurion and the other guards. Now these were people who in an earthly sense had absolutely nothing to gain from believing Jesus or any reason to follow him. They weren't Jews, so they weren't raised in this history and culture of following God and waiting for this Messiah. And also, since they weren't Jews, then they would not have gained any of the cultural benefits that the Jews kept amongst their people. In fact, 
this centurion and these other guards, they had everything to lose. Their job was to ensure that whoever was sentenced for crucifixion was crucified to their death. And if they didn't do things right, especially for someone as controversial as Jesus, then they could be imprisoned and possibly even tortured or killed for defying orders. So to the centurion and these guards, Jesus was just another guy, maybe even just another criminal. But then they got to experience a taste of Jesus firsthand. That experience, that encounter with Jesus, led them to understand the truth and proclaim the truth that Jesus is the Son of God. So in these verses, we also see the resurrected saints go into Jerusalem and appear to other people. Well, that leads to some questions, doesn't it? I mean, who did they appear to? What did they show and tell them? What happened to them afterwards? Well, we aren't told the answers to these questions, and that's okay, because the answers aren't really relevant. But also, what having those questions allows us to do is it allows us to put ourselves in their shoes. So do that for a moment. Imagine you are one of these saints who died faithfully believing God, faithfully believing Jesus, and faithfully believing that hope that they, they talked about. And then imagine you wake up, you sit up, and you notice you're in your tomb. And then you notice, hey, I'm breathing. And then you look, the doorway's broken open. And at that moment you realize, you were dead, but by the power of Jesus, you're alive. Now think to yourself, if that was you, where would you go? Who would you want to see? What would you want to tell or show them? To the people these saints encountered, whoever they were, maybe they were family, friends, who knows. But to whoever the people were that these saints encountered, they were the best messengers of hope to their lives. How many people do you think that that centurion and those guards told about Jesus after their encounter? How do you think their lives changed after the encounter? Now, I said I would talk about how you can share this good news hope with people this year. And I mentioned one way about finding um, a video about somebody talking about the Easter story as a whole and sharing that. You all have so many people you're in direct contact with or that you have the ability to reach just through your social media avenues that you can be the saints. You can be the centurion. You can be the messengers of hope to these people. So here's the challenge I'm giving you. Read through the Easter accounts again. And I'm going to put up here where the main chapters are. You can find that in the Bible. But before you read those chapters, before you read that story, while you read the story, and then after you read the story also, pray for God to show you how he wants you to share his message and be listening for the answer that he gives you. Because what he is having me share with you right now may not be the message he wants you to share with others. They might need to hear it in a different way, and that's okay. Listen for what that message is. Listen for how he wants you to share, but then share it. Make your own video and text it out. Put it on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever social media avenues you've got. Write it out in a creative way and send it to people. I mean, all these different apps that you guys use, they were designed with the idea of connecting us in bigger and more ways. So use them that way for the most important message that people will ever hear. If you need a few other verses to help jumpstart some creativeness also, um, I'm going to put up a few more here on the screen for you that all capture in some way the message of this celebration week. So read through these, they're all short. Um, as you read through them, maybe two or three jump out at you. Maybe there's one that jumps out at you where God really is hammering that home for you to send for someone else that they just need to hear that right now. But I hope, even in the midst of what's going on, that you are holding on to the hope, holding on to the hope that he's given us. Uh, make sure that you thank Jesus for what he went through to give us this hope. Satan wants this season and this social media realm 
to be drowning in fear. Let this hope help you live floating above all of that and help you pull others up with you. That is my prayer for you this week. But as we, after you end this, take a few moments yourself to talk with God. Thank Jesus for his sacrifice. To thank them for the hope they offer. And to listen and have him show you how to share that hope with others. You guys want your youth group to be known as a team. Hence the Team 116. Well, teams go and do. But teams also stick together and they do it together. So as a reminder of that, let's give each other a big Team 116 on three. Hands in. Three, two, one. Team 116! Now let's go and make this the most blessed Easter for the world, guys.